All right, we have another relic from the Brawl time. Now, in case you guys are very old or remember Dinosaur Times, I was one of the best players in the world in Brawl, and I was actually ranked number two in the world by the very last rankings of the game. So I do know a lot of random Brawl history, and I was a part of the old Smash Wars, all this Brawl. I was around back when. And Coney recently released a video talking about a match that I kind of had an idea which one it was. It's actually a very popular old school match that I've talked about on stream a few times. So I wanted to watch the video and check it out because I think you guys need some additional context on top. There's a period of Smash history that is almost completely absent from the record books that is still shrouded in darkness. But as the Brawl community transitioned to Smash 4 and then to Smash Ultimate, many hallowed tales from its ancient history have been seemingly lost to time with nobody left to tell them. The main reason for that happening is because there's no Brawl documentary. Matter of fact, if there was not a Melee documentary, a lot of the Melee history will be completely lost because it's truly ancient. Uh, which is why it's a big disappointment that the Brawl documentary never actually came out. Smash Bros may be considered legitimate now, but there were many growing pains that came with Smash's slow transformation from party favorite to international esport. I'd be willing to argue it never actually became an uh, international sport. Um, I think it got close at its peak. But uh, after the events of 2020 and kind of where the scene is at now, I think it's on a downhill slope right now. Dude, I remember Otori, man. He was uh, he was the Meta Knight player uh, for 2012. He, he won 2012. He looked like the best player in the world, straight up. And he dominated everybody in such a fashion that uh, I, I didn't think one could be so good at the game. There was also the year where finals were um, between Japanese players. So it, it was at a time where we thought, damn, J Japan just got us, you know? Set of circumstances that came together to create what I think is the most bizarre match in Smash history. It's a balmy June morning in Columbus, Ohio. The Hyatt Regency is host to one of the biggest gaming events of the summer. Oh, I knew it was going to be MLG. The moment he said 2010, yeah, that's that's MLG. Uh, it was always my dream to go to an MLG tournament, uh, and I got the chance to go because uh, I qualified for the, for the pro bracket uh, in Melee. And my pro Melee bracket, my group, me, Armada, Mango, this uh, European Falco player, I'm forgetting the name, and West Balls. <laughs> Because of a licensing issue with Nintendo, who were strangely against competitive play at this time, none of Brawl could be streamed. That doesn't mean there's no recorded footage, though. It's interesting because I think MLG was actually recording some of the games, but they couldn't release them. Because I think what happened was that Nintendo outright told them, okay, don't even host the tournament. And then they kind of landed in the middle of like, okay, don't make content of the game, like barely even take pictures host the events and because mlg was unable to monetize off of the content they had to drop the circuit ak and nintendo got in the way this is mike hayes mike hayes is a marth player from southern california see a lot of you guys only know mike hayes well people know mike hayes probably from this random video where there's an ice climber player chain grabbing him and he starts yelling mike hayes is the true example of how much the smash community has changed how in my opinion i'm sorry to say but world culture has changed the smash community because my case back in the day was probably one of the most <laughs> brash to put up to put a simply brash attitudes out there. He was extremely vulgar and he was just, you know, I mean, all sorts of example of what you think of what, being woke. He was completely the opposite, essentially. Uh, my case was super rowdy, super, super loud. Uh, he was fun to be around. He he just didn't care, man. He would just show up to tournaments and yell and rock people and talk trash and get really personal. He was wild, man. And he embodied how the Smash community kind of worked back in the day because we come from that fighting game background where it really truly was the battle of the fittest, you know, where people, you, you could not get emotional about these things and people were going to try to rock you off your game. I've had guys severely heckle me, calling me overweight, fat, your mama this, your mama that, getting like in my face as I'm playing their friend in, 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 in tournament and nowadays people will get upset if you know they get called something on twitter so it's just completely different times and now my case you know is completely changed you know he <laughs> he's no longer that he's no longer that my case he's considered the best marth in the united states and one of the best marth players in the world that's right side mr r and leon in europe and mike neko in japan mike neko oh that's a horrible pronunciation man it's mika neko come on come on i'm actually really mad because i lost to mika neko in apex 2013 i was one hit away from beating him game three and i choked an edge guard that i had i just needed to hold on to the ledge mike hayes is certainly a bracket threat to any competitor 
Funny enough, the same could be said for his character of choice, Marth. Marth has an unusually good matchup spread against the whole cast. The thing that made Marth pretty good is that he didn't really lose to anybody bad. So while he had some characters that he lost, for, well, there were some characters that just outright beat Marth, like for example, Meta Knight or King DDD or perhaps Ice Climbers, Marth did basically good enough where with skill, you could beat anybody, which was rare. And it's why, in my opinion, he was one of the best characters in Brawl. See, the Brawl metagame was kind of like a food chain. The Snake eats the Diddy Kong, the Olimar eats the Snake, the Falco eats the Olimar, the Ice Climbers eat the Falco, and Meta Knight eats everybody. See, I feel like I feel like I don't agree with that. I feel like the game was like that for a little bit of time, but then I feel like towards the end, uh, for me, the clear best two characters in the game were absolutely Meta Knight and Ice Climbers, where either one of them felt like the best character in the game because Ice Climber play got so optimized towards the end that you couldn't even... Meta Knight couldn't even... Full hub double jump above an ice climber shield and down there, and he will somehow get pivot grab midair, like fully above them, because they found ways to grab you. They had ways to grab you off of platforms from the ground. There were so many lame, weird setups where even if you block certain things or even if you moved out of the way, it will frame trap you into getting grabbed. And obviously, the moment you got grabbed, you were immediately dead. Uh, it became extremely frustrating to deal with those characters. Meta Knight, on the other hand, remained pr remained pretty much a contender or probably the best character, but there wasn't any development with the character. It just became about slowly utilizing Meta Knight's tools better and better, where every other character just had more and more crazy tech to go along. Ice Climbers kept finding new tricks and kept finding new tech. And then eventually at some point, late Diddy Kong meta, in my opinion, Diddy was a very solid contender for being top two in the game, actually, simply because Diddy Kong could infinite you off of neutral. He could hit you with a banana and actually infinite you. He had the best defense neutral in the entire game, for sure. Somehow better than Ice Climbers, in my opinion. And he also did excellent against Meta Knight, especially because most Meta Knight players were terrible at the matchup and there were not many Diddy Kong players, meaning that the good Diddy players that you had, namely ADHD and genius before he quit they could abuse the matchup so much more because they played a thousand meta knights the meta knights did not you know how many adhds can you play not really right they really stomp out anybody that's not in their cool clubhouse but they all have their natural predators within marth by comparison is kind of an anomaly despite a losing matchup to meta knight because everybody loses to meta knight marth enjoys an even to winning nah not everybody doesn't lose to meta knight there's some really random characters that do pretty darn good against meta knight Fox did really good against Meta Knight. I think Fox did better than Falco against Meta Knight, which is a, is a controversial tape, but it's what it's what it felt like from playing all of the best players. Because I pretty much played everybody in Brawl, uh, abroad and in, in, in the US. Pikachu was really difficult for Meta Knight as well. Ice Climbers, it really depended on the Meta Knight. I had a really good record against Ice Climbers, and I felt like I, it was one of my best matchups, and I still lost one third of the time to the top Ice Climbers. Against the entire cast. Even the DDD matchup, which looks unfavorable on paper, has been proven doable thanks to superior mobility and a very tight window for DDD's signature chain grab. It's hard, but Marth can do it. The reason this is important is because it puts Marth in a fantastic position to face the unpredictable tides of a tournament bracket. Unfortunately though, Luck is not on Mike Hayes' side today. He only gets to round three before running up against fellow SoCal native Rich Brown, probably the top Olimar player in the world at this time in 2010. Yeah, at that time, Rich Brown was the best Olimar player uh, before we had the Japanese guys start coming over, uh, namely Brood and Yantona, which took Olimar to a brand new level. Rich defeats Mike Hayes, sending him down into the loser's bracket pretty early. But things aren't all bad. Mike defeats Dark Energy, top Pikachu player Anther. That's funny, Anther, man. Anther's the one who made the, the first, uh, the second ladder, Anther's ladder. Top Meta Knight named Kel, Mike is poised to take the loser's bracket by storm, ready to cut down anybody in his path until he meets a player by the name of Ook. Ook, Ook is an enigma, a shadow of the mysterious region known as the midwest <laughs> that's actually a good joke the thing about the midwest players is that they all played whack stages played whack characters and they didn't really come out to a lot of tournaments and when they did they tended to do good because they caught a lot of people uh randomly right you will have these like mid-tier heroes essentially come out for these tournaments which is why i think brawl tournaments are really fun a lot of people talk about brawl being such an unbalanced piece of crap game because of meta knight but the reality is that the game had so much random weird tech so many random things you could do everything worked on the best character especially meta knight so you could fight the best whatever i don't know uh luigi player for something right and yeah meta knight destroyed luigi but lo and behold luigi had a specific setup obscure jab log whatever setup that will kill you at 20 if, you, if he grabbed you the guy you're playing in bracket is the best that is so good luck right 
you better figure it out fast, you know? So it's like, there's always like, there was always like a thread, and I always found that interesting. Later on, they took all of that away, which made characters just kind of like, well, your character's better than this other character, GG. It meant the vibe was completely different. Midwest players were famously a lot more laid back and communal, less sweaty. Yeah, I'd say SoCal were, um, were very rowdy, or West players were really rowdy. Midwest were very uh, laid back, played on wax stages, and Trista were super sweaty. K's faced his next opponent. He hadn't simply encountered your run-of-the-mill Meta Knight or maybe a garden variety Falco. No. Ook played Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong was really weird in Brawl because he was really bad, but had a lot of really random weird tech. And if you didn't know every setup about it, he could catch up guard pretty good. Usually he wasn't really a threat, but... Then again, Ook was probably the best Donkey Kong um, next to DK Whale. As I said before, finding footage of Ook is kind of difficult. He's achieved something of a mythical status in the community nowadays. So I solicited my Twitter audience to help find photo evidence of the guy. They sent over a couple videos where he appears, including this screw attack feature that's funnier than anything I've ever done. <gasps> <laughs> the screw attack videos were so cringe. They were so good and funny in a bad way, in a good way. Bro! Oh, this is hilarious. Game set. But perhaps the most peculiar thing about him is his character choice. See, Donkey Kong in Brawl is not a good character. See, that's the thing I love about Brawl is that you had all these random characters that were not really able to win tournaments, but you had so many character specialties of random characters. I'm telling you, some of the hardest people I played in Brawl were not the top, were obviously, you know, the top players, but so sometimes it was just the random best player from random Kentucky town playing this random mid-tier character was really hard for no reason. Because of his big size, terrible disadvantage, and abysmal recovery, DK loses to nearly everyone in the top half of the cast, including a nearly unwinnable matchup against DDD. Yeah, DDD had a very lame infinite chain grab on Donkey Kong from anywhere on the stage. It would just kill you. And DDD also had an insanely easy time grabbing. Infinite chain grab that players could learn in mere minutes. The best DKs could still prevail against this strategy, but it was a monumental challenge. But despite all of his shortcomings, Donkey Kong had a uniquely favorable matchup against one top tier. Marth. It sounds strange to say now, but what you need to understand is that Brawl Donkey Kong doesn't function like he does in any other game. Yeah, but in Brawl, he was more of a jumper. Um, see, the thing about Marth is that Marth's biggest weakness was that he had to jump a lot, meaning that every time he would jump, he would become vulnerable in the air because Forty would take a little bit of time to come out, and it was also kind of predictable that you will see it coming. Not to mention that Marth had another specific weakness, which was landing behind him will mean that the only way he can punish you is either by rolling away and reset in the scenario or up being out of shield. Up being out of shield backwards was not only slower, but also it meant that if Marth missed, he would be, you know, you could just charge a smash attack and kill him early. So most Marth players will not up be out of shield for that very reason. Donkey Kong was amazing and anti-stuffing uh, Marth. And then his ground moves and the ground pound actually were very difficult for Marth. Not to mention then he had the side B mix up to mix it up on shield and on landing. And it made up for a really weird good matchup against Marth. Not to mention that Duncan could actually edge card Marth. Brawl DK isn't really like that. In a game with few combos, DK is weirdly almost a sword character. He uses super long disjointed limbs. Yep, he basically just fought with down tilt, forward tilt, up tilt, back Keep the opponent at bay through tilts and his best move by far his back air. This thing is long, and in the minds of many a player, this alone is enough to push the Marth DK matchup to at least even. It might even be favorable for DK. These games are simply lost to time. But that doesn't matter, because beautifully, what we have here in this third game tells us the whole story. The game three is actually so legendary, and it's funny because the rules for MLG tournaments were whack. You had some stages that had no business being legal you had norfer and then you had green greens green greens is a stage that has walls to the sides meaning you can chain grab people using deductive reasoning we can assume that mike hayes won game one ook won game two and mike hayes was given the choice to counter pick both stage and character and for their final encounter he went here I think probably what happened is that Mike won game one with Marth, got caught off guard game two, and then felt like he had a cheap, easy counterpick for a game three win and it backfired. This stage 
was never allowed. Green Greens has, to my knowledge, only been legal at the MLG Pro Circuit events and nowhere else. I think it was legal at some Midwest tournaments, some obscure ones, but yeah, I, I don't know what they were thinking. Between the walls, the bomb blocks, the close blast zones, and the apples that can somehow RNG between being free health or throwable items, this stage was never considered a valid stage for competition. But Mike Hayes had picked it, and he also picked King DDD. Yeah, that's pretty much the whole point of picking King Greens. You can abuse the infinite chinger without actually knowing the chinger. In reality, a better choice stage would have been FD, because I think this stage actually helped out Donkey Kong, because you had the platforms to move around, and then you had places to go underneath to recover as well. We can assume that after losing game two, Mike Hayes was so intent on winning this set that he threw his conventional main to the wind and chose the absolute optimal stage and character choice for the situation. Littering the field with his projectiles. After a couple of throws, he attempts to hit a jumping forward aerial on Ook, quickly resets by retreating to the left platform, showing off some new tech in the process. <laughs> the crowd was so jacked. They were, they were yelling up and they were just they were just going ape. They were going ape in the background, yelling at everything. What? So my man, my man was just taunting. It just looked like a clown match. Mike Hayes rebukes him. Ook makes the incredibly risky decision to jump into the wall, but Mike my man's having fun, and, and now he gets it. Oh, he missed! Retreat. He missed the grab. That's a bad mistake, bro. A bomb falls on his head. He is now taking four percent from Mike Hayes and forty percent. Yep. Players. Ook tries for a risky headbutt play to break Mike Hayes' shield, but it doesn't pan out. Mike Hayes finally lands a grab here, and the horror commences. Even Wispy himself. The win is actually going the other way too. Seems to conspire against him as he blows in the opposite direction instead of disrupting the infinite. Eventually, Wispy relents and Ook escapes, but Mike Hayes secures the first kill. Ook comes back with some offense, but Mike immediately uses DDD's massive recovery to get back to center stage. Yeah, Mike pretty much says, "Screw it, I'm just going to, I'm just going to center stage." It's, Mike's lack of familiarity with the character is requiring him to lean on the safe and simple strategies that the walls allow for. These blocks and this center stage is his lifeline, and if the cost for being there is some forty something percent, he'll happily pay that toll. Ook Good analysis. That is exactly what's going on. Apples come down from the tree, and when Ook goes to pick one up, he eats it. Mike Hayes's apple, however, is an item for some reason, and he uses it to get a bit more damage. Ook secures an early kill by hitting a huge punch. That was a really good play. And that's also why Donkey Kong's tails on platforms were mad good. Because look, here you can you die because you Round blocked on a platform. Rocks. Ook retreats to the left platform again. He's made a big play. The crowd was also like, Ook, 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 Ook. <laughs> he still needs to approach. See, in competitive Smash, if the timer runs down to zero, the player with the higher percentage automatically loses. Some of the craziest matches have come down to a time, time not in Brawl. They, they're just always intense. And without a projectile to speak of, Ook is forced to take back to the sky. Ook misses a hit, but finds something even better. Oh, yeah, that's a good setup. The king yep. escapes. After a bit of a drought, Mike Hayes secures another grab. But with no wall in sight and no practice on the infinite, DK quickly escapes. Yeah, he should have died from that, but... Suddenly, for seemingly no reason, Mike Hayes charges a forward smash attack near a wall of four bombs. Actually up smash? If he gets hit by this, he's probably dead. But miraculously, this happens. Oh, my God. That was perfect range. Ook lands another giant hit out of nowhere at just 80%. Mike Hayes survives. Mike Hayes jumps off the top Ooh. of the map and dies. No, I don't think he ever survived. I think he tried to jump to cancel the momentum, but it'll still kill you, I'm pretty sure. Jumping was the move, actually, but it's just the blast zones are just really short on this map. Ook begins to play to the crowd, but he takes so long to do so, he gets grabbed again. The crowd <laughs> asks him. I don't know. Lives. The dynamic has now changed. Mike Hayes must now be the one to approach since Ook has a stock lead. Yeah, a big part of Brawl is just comes down to getting the lead and forcing someone to approach. It changes the whole dynamic of the entire match. You can make matchups that feel bad, feel easy if you make the other guy approach. Patrol. His pummel causes an explosion and somehow Ook survives at 109. I think the UB actually made him survive. I, I, I feel like it, I remember it did something. 92%. 
and then dies. <laughs> the crowd, I know the crowd was going intense, man. Honestly, some of my fondest memories in Brawl and early Smash 4 was like when the community and the game felt more like a, like a raw thing. When it started going super esport and super woke and just like, oh, you can't do this, can't do that, can't do this, can't do that. People getting offended for every little thing. It just it just lost its magic really fast. And then it became it became way too serious and for the wrong reasons, right? Like, it's not like we were playing for a million dollars, right? We we're playing for like a little bit more, but now all the fun is, is taken away. I would rather have played for the same as usual, but instead have a lot more fun. There is only one thing on my case's mind. Oh, this should have been it. There's this another scramble. Oh my God! Look at the block at the look at the block on the left. Look at the block on the left. I think he's dead here. A miracle. Oh my God! This part is so jank. I remember this. It made no sense why that interaction happened. Why the block exploded on him the way it did. But yeah, he he actually died. He died first, even though he was lower percentage. And I just think. like that, Ook won. The Look at that. Oh, so it's because of the angle. Ook went up, and then Mike Hayes went straight to the body side. actually sat on it, killing Mike Hayes instantly. Because he was still holding down after the throw, DDD got... I believe that's the reason, yeah. If he had held up, I think it would have been okay. at a terrible angle. Ook, by contrast, was actually holding up to survive the guaranteed follow-up. I was there that day. Somewhere... I was there that day. I like how it's like... I like the whole crowd was crowd like, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> There's actually a lot of really good MLG matches. There's a lot of really interesting ones. For example, um, one, the last MLG tournament was won by Genus, who beat everybody. He just destroyed everybody. He had not attended MLG, I think, for the majority of the year or the whole year and just came by on the Dallas one, on the, the Texas one at the end and won the one with the most money and basically earned the most money a Smash competitor had ever earned for a very long time, which was like $12,500 in 2010, which is a ton of money for playing video games. I think he paid off college for that or something like that. It was a massive amount of money. He beat everybody, right? It's interesting because Mutigan and ADHD got banned for that tournament for colluding, <laughs> you know? There's a lot of really interesting matches. You have uh, the Ally versus Mutigan rivalry going on through some of the circuit. You have uh, the rise of Nick Riddle, which was Eason's brother, uh, who at the time was known as the best Zero Suit until Salem came to the picture and won Apex. So there's just a lot of really rich brawl history. This was a really well done video, Coney. I actually really enjoyed it. Um, I'd be happy to do some videos kind of like this myself for some of my stories as well, just because I travel so much and I played everybody i've gone to japan i've gone to canada i've gone to pretty much every state i used to go on random mega bus trips and play everybody so there's a lot of really cool stories we can talk about but nonetheless this is a legendary match and i'm glad i got more exposure because i think this video beforehand had like 3,000 views and i think i was 200 of them <laughs> let me know in the comments below that uh, let me know down in the comments if you guys enjoy this and what other videos you would like me to react to or watch